What's up everyone? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Laser Packer 2. This may look like a pretty small laser, but it's got some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve that allows it to work on bigger projects than most others. Stick around and I'll show you what it can do. And make sure you stay till the end to get some project ideas and find out where you can get your own. The first thing you notice is how well everything is made. Even the packaging is really nice. All these parts are anodized aluminum and feel super solid. They really put a lot of thought into this. You'll only have to attach a few pieces together and hook up two wires for the basic setup. You can run this from a PC or Mac, but I've just been using the app on my phone. You'll have to create an account and are then walked through the process of doing a test piece. From opening the box to completing the first project took under 15 minutes, and that was with me doing a lot of extra stuff like moving the camera around. It's really intuitive and I hardly touch the instructions. Next I loaded up one of my own images. Many of these clips are sped up to keep the video short, but here's one at actual speed so you can see just how fast this thing is. There's a bunch of options for different materials which will automatically adjust the speed and power settings of the laser. These seem to work pretty well, but you can also adjust them manually to fine tune the depth and darkness of the engraving. Here's a list of various materials that you can engrave. They also offer a number of free graphics you can use. Another cool feature lets you create your own text or draw something. We'll cover that more in a minute. Here's a few different ways the machine can be set up. The laser unit can be tilted for use on angled objects. You can make something like a doorstop with a family name or put an image on the side of a cabinet. This cone acts as a shield to protect your eyes from the laser. It also has a fan to clear out the smoke and fumes it sets the laser at the perfect height for engraving. This is great for using on a larger surface. I could see myself using this to put my logo on custom pieces of furniture or the backs of signs I make. I could even scribble my signature or a note and engrave that. You'll be limited to 100 by 100 millimeters, which is just under four by four inches. It's a good idea to use this in a well-ventilated area. I have a fan running in the background to help get the smoke out of my garage. Some fumes can be dangerous, and even burning wood has a pretty strong smell. These rollers are optional, but I think it's a must-have add-on. You can configure them in a couple ways. All you have to do is go into the app and turn the third axis on. Cylinder mode will allow you to engrave round objects. I recommend going to the dollar store and getting some cheap test pieces like these pencil holders. It will take a minute to figure out which way you need to orient your material. And having a test piece like this will prevent you from engraving your image upside down on a real project. I should probably point out that these cups aren't actually round, so the image gets a little crazy. What can I say? There's probably a reason they only cost a dollar. They also include a couple rollers for doing longer pieces like this mini baseball bat. And yes, a full size bat will fit too. Slab mode allows you to feed a piece of material through the laser. You'll be limited to 100 millimeters in width, but the piece can be as long as you'd like. The final setup for the roller is by far the coolest. 
Flipping them over turns the laser pecker into something straight out of the future. Selecting trolley mode will convert it into a rolling robot that can engrave an unlimited distance. This did fight me a bit at first, but while I tell you what I did to fix that, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button. As you can tell, it's drifting a bit as it moves. Initially, I thought the finished plywood was too slick or I needed to use some sort of guide. Instead, I just took off the rollers. These are optional and are held in place with a magnet. There's a lot more fonts than just this default one. This text ended up being over 30 inches long. I can't do anything that big with any of my other lasers. Just keep in mind that because the laser is moving, there's a chance it could unplug itself like mine did. I was able to get the project finished, but that's an easily avoidable headache. I even found that I could just set it on a board and it would track straight. I prefer doing this over slab mode for wider pieces. Now the Uber Eats driver won't have any excuses for not being able to find your house. Now let's look at a couple other quick projects. These will make some great gifts and things that you can sell. I get these blocks at the dollar store. This whole project took about 10 minutes with no planning. These gloves were just dying to be engraved. Leather only requires the depth to be set to 3%, so it engraves super fast. This is the actual speed. All right, here's one of my favorite things to do, tumblers. People go nuts over these. For my first attempt, I used the stainless steel settings, which engraved at 100% power and depth. It worked fine, but it took a while. I actually found that I could cut the time in half by turning the depth down to 50%. This was more than enough to remove the coating on the tumblers. It took about 25 minutes to do the second side. I used a magic eraser and a bit of water to remove any residue and clean up the image. Another great selling project is dog tags. You can buy these in bulk packs of 100. Again, I used the stainless steel settings. It permanently discolors the surface of the stainless. It won't rub off, but it was a little lighter than I was hoping for. A good trick here is to use some of this dry molly spray lube. After it's done, you just clean it off with a magic eraser. It makes a huge difference. If you're interested in learning more about the Laser Pecker 2, purchasing one for yourself, I'll have an affiliate link in the description. I'll also post some links to some of the different materials and products I used in this video. You pay the same price, but I get a small kickback, which really helps me out. Other ways to show your support are to like and share this video and leave a comment or question below. You can also support me on Patreon like these fine people here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see everyone over on one of these other videos.